Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Great to be here. Today is episode 2414 of the Cabral Concept. Fun show here today called Why Mosquitoes Only Bite Certain People. So this is a question that came up on the Cabral House Calls, our weekend edition of the show, where we answer our community's questions each and every Saturday and Sunday. And um, this was an interesting topic that I know that not everybody's able to tune into every single show and every single question, so I wanted to make sure that you knew that there is actual science as to why some people get bit more than others. Now, I've always found this interesting, and I've read a lot of different theories, a lot of different myths, so I actually looked into science, and I want to share that science with you. And one of the reasons why I want to do that is also because I am one of those people who gets bit a lot more than other people. So my wife and I might be standing uh, beside each other in the backyard in Maine. If you've ever been to Maine, uh, certainly as it starts to get towards dusk, uh, all of those mosquitoes start to come out. Now, we use a natural mosquito repellent in our backyard made of all essential oils, and it actually works really well. But nevertheless, there's mosquitoes out there. And if we are standing next to each other, I will be the one to get bit, which is why my life, my wife does not mind standing beside me outside. She said, okay, I'm going to be the one to get bit. It's like I'm her natural insect repellent. But nevertheless, what I wanted to share with you is how do you or is it possible to prevent yourself from getting bit naturally? Maybe yes, maybe no. Let's take a look at what the actual science says. So before we get into the science of what we know is the reason why some people get bit more than others, there is also certain myths myths around it, or maybe things that are true, but there's no real science yet to prove them. So the first one is this. People say, oh, I get bit because I have sweet blood. I like to use that line <laughs> for, for a number of years, but there's no, there's no real meaning behind that. What does that mean? Your blood's more sweet than others. So we start, I started to look a little bit deeper as well, and I said, okay, well, there might be some truth to the actual blood type you have. Because at least in a Petri dish, in a lab, mosquitoes seem to be more drawn to type O blood or a B blood type. And there's blood type A, blood type B, blood type AB, and blood type O. The problem is that doesn't really necessarily play out in the real world. So just, just to say, I know many people that are not type O or AB and they get bit just as much, if not more, than other people. Um, so what I want to share with you is I don't know that there's a whole lot of truth to your actual blood type. And until somebody tells me what sweet blood means, uh, I don't know that there's a lot of truth to being sweet-blooded as well. It's nice to say, though. It is, it is fun to say. The other one that I, I've seen back and forth go around is people that are lower in certain B, vitam B vitamins or higher in certain B vitamins may get bit more than others. Now, again, um, I've run hundreds of thousands of labs with people, and I don't know that there's any real correlation between your B vitamin level and getting bit by mosquitoes. So if you've heard about any one of those three before, I don't think that there's actual valid science yet to back those up, but there is valid science on the next five reasons, and one of those five may describe you. So the first one is this. Well, let me just, let's get a little bit into mosquitoes first, right? So mosquitoes, believe it or not, can see you or at least your heat signature from like 50 feet away. So Keep in mind that they can actually detect heat from you from 25 to 50 feet away. So one thing that mosquitoes are absolutely more drawn to is heat, at least a heat signal that they will then explore. Because that could be their food source, right? So if we think about it, um, someone that runs a little more hot, like myself, then my wife, who runs a little bit more cooler, um, do they get bit more often? Well, interesting enough, at least anecdotally in my family, it's absolutely the truth, right? So if I look at different people in my family who run the most hot, right, more of that pitta-based, uh, at least heat-based signature from the pitta-based uh, dosha, is my dad um, and my youngest daughter uh, and myself, 
So if I look at my oldest daughter, nope, she's a little cooler, like my wife. If I look at my mom, nope, she's a little bit cooler. They don't get bit as often. Now, again, that's just anecdotal evidence. But what I can tell you is that absolutely mosquitoes do go, do go for a hotter heat signature. So I just want you to keep that in mind, um, that if you are running a little bit more hot, you'll, you will attract more mosquitoes. Now, the second part is not just heat, but sweat. So anyone that is sweating. So if you're not typically prone to getting bit by mosquitoes, but you're sweating, you will become more prone to getting bit by mosquitoes. So that sweat will attract more mosquitoes. Interesting enough, one of the reasons why the sweat may actually attract mosquitoes is not from the moisture or sweat itself, but actually from the carbon dioxide given off. So it's, it appears that the number one reason why people get bit by mosquitoes is carbon dioxide. So now we have a little something to the blood and respiration as well. So maybe there is something called sweet blood. Maybe blood higher in carbon dioxide is considered more sweet to mosquitoes because there is a direct correlation between carbon dioxide, which mosquitoes can sense as well, and people getting bit even more so than heat. So I'm gonna give you a couple more in just a moment, but the number one reason why people get bit more than others is carbon dioxide. Now, part of that can simply be respiration. If the person has a higher, faster metabolism, maybe they're giving off uh, more carbon dioxide, their breath rate may be a little higher, not necessarily breath rate, it can actually just be carbon dioxide um, that they're, they're giving off a larger amount, or there's a larger amount of carbon dioxide in the blood, not necessarily out of range, but just maybe one or two points higher, and mosquitoes can actually sense that. That's very, very likely and very, very possible, without a doubt. So keep that in mind, number one reason. Okay, two more reasons as well. If you are someone that wears perfumes or essential oils or anything like that. Now, I will say this. Some essential oils actually um, repel mosquitoes. So if you look at things like rose geranium, geranium-based oils, if you look um, at, at certain other ones, I'm not going to go through all of them right now, um, they can actually repel mosquitoes. So that's not a bad thing. And, and if you want to actually see the different companies that I recommend for natural bug repellents, you can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash resources. And I have all my favorites there um, that, that I use for natural bug repellents as well for ticks, mosquitoes, uh, et cetera. So perfume-based, but it's not just that. Um, let's say um, like myself. So I use a natural product in my hair and it contains coconut oil. It contains beeswax. It contains bentonite clay and a couple others. Again, it's, it's just at my resource page. Um, but that could potentially attract mosquitoes to a greater degree as well. Something that they might smell more fragrance. Uh, they might be more attracted to it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, anything like that, um, maybe even a scented deodorant that people are wearing could attract mosquitoes to a greater degree. Could be something that you play with using it one day, not one day, um, especially if you're outside quite a bit. And the last one I wanted to share with you is actually bacteria on the skin. So people have different bacteria on their skin. Now, again, um, humans contain the same types of bacteria for the most part, but the strains could be in larger amounts for one individual than another. This is being explored now in more depth. And it's very interesting because if we look at like maybe anaerobic based bacteria and there's more carbon dioxide as well, could that be a signature for the mosquitoes? Not just inside of you, in your blood. Could it be in the actual bacteria? I don't know. I mean, these are interesting things to explore. The bacteria itself on your skin, is it just overgrowth or is it a particular type of strain? Um, now, again, when I look at these things, I say this is more research for us to look into, more research that I would love to be able to explore more as well. Because I think that, you know, if we look at it, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to mask the bacteria in our skin? Are we trying to mask carbon dioxide? Are we trying to mask heat, scents? And that will allow for the best, well, protection from mosquitoes. Now, Overall, I don't think that we need to be overly worried about mosquitoes in the first place. Uh, what, I, what I do think, though, is that in the future, there could be more and more viruses and different things um, 
that come along with mosquito bites. And so we do have to be at least cognizant of that. And, and then for the most part, there is, of course, just the annoyance and itch of being bit by a mosquito. So I would uh, feel like I've left the show um, undone if I didn't give you a few of the other things that we do um, in my family if someone gets a mosquito bite. So the first thing to understand is that the same thing that helps to... Uh, prevent the mosquito bites, which is like the rose geranium oil and the lemongrass, the natural vanilla uh, and the citronella, all of those things, um, they help to repel, but they can also help to take the itch out. But one thing that we found really effective in my family is to just take a teaspoon of baking soda, put it in a little ceramic bowl or glass bowl and, or a mug if you just want to use that. And you're just going to add just a tiny amount of water. I, ideally, it's a filtered water. And you're just mixing around until it becomes a paste. So baking soda, a little bit of water, it becomes a paste. I put this on my daughter since they were just babies. I've used it for myself as well. You put it on a very liberal amount on the mosquito bite and you keep it on there until it dries out and then you can just brush it off and it will flake right off in your sink or wherever you want it to. And it helps to take the itch out. So I've done this for my daughters. I do it for myself. It's really simple. It's natural. It's easy. It's a very alkaline-based mixture, which again helps to pull some of that itch out as well. Really careful though with young kids. They scratch and they scratch and they scratch until they basically take off the whole top of the mosquito bite. Now, the the reason why we itch too, we'll just give a little bit more behind it, um, is because the pain that we're creating with the itching is actually, so the pain that we're creating with the skin by itching is taking away the sensation of the itch. So the pain overloads the itch. And that's one of the main reasons why we're you know itching in the first place. But what I will say is this, is just be careful with that. Um, and, and a lot of times the next day is we'll put a little bit of Manuka honey or wildflower honey on it. And uh, again, just a tiny amount and it will allow it to dry out. That helps with a couple things. It can help a little bit with the itch, no doubt about it. But it helps if there's any little bit of, um, again, I can't give you any medical advice or anything like that, any little infection there. Manuka honey has been shown to be uh, pretty powerful for that as well. So that is it. So that is the main reasons why certain people get bit by mosquitoes. Uh, the five things, carbon dioxide, um, there's not a lot you're going to do to manipulate that, especially if it's within healthy range. Heat, sure, um, you could be <laughs> work on cooling the overall body. But some people, again, they're higher metabolism, just run more uh, hot through thermogenesis, uh, sweating. Yes, so just be cognizant of that. You want to wipe the sweat off your body or use a bug repellent uh, if you are sweating. Um, Perfume-based smells, be careful going outside, hiking, et cetera, using any type of uh, scents. And then the bacteria in your skin. Well, that's going to be more prolific, most likely, uh, the more you're uh, working out, sweating, et cetera. So again, just using good hygiene as well before you're going out and, and possibly getting bit. So hopefully this was helpful today. As always, if the show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. I'll talk with you soon.